today we're going to be talking about starting points for GIS, how to, how to get started with GIS, um, specifically within tribal governments, but I'm going to start off by just kind of talking about the, the concept of GIS generally and how to get started. So as a new person to GIS, when you first take on this subject and you start doing research, you're going to find that GIS is a very broad subject that applies to just about every discipline that there is. And it's very easy to get sucked into the idea of it's, it's too complicated to learn or there's too much going on. What you have to do when you're first starting out with GIS is really take this subject and, and boil it down to what applies to you. Start off with a simple question of, of what are you trying to achieve? What is your direction? What results or what answers are you trying to find using GIS? And that will generally start us in the path of where we need to begin. Typically, for someone starting off with GIS, it's a relatively simple set of starting points. We need basic GIS software. We need an understanding of what it is the objective is going to be. And from there, it's a matter of training. It's a matter of learning and understanding the tools which we're using. So once we have that basic set of software and we have that basic set of training, a typical GIS project is going to start off by planning out starting off with a whiteboard or a piece of paper and really just writing out what your goals and objectives are. What are the, the data sets or what are the things that we're going to go collect? And what do we need to know about them? What are the questions and the answers? Or in GIS, we would call those attributes. What are those things that we need to understand? Once we have that, that basic understanding in place, then we just utilize some basic training to understand how to use the tools. And this starts off at a, a very simple level, you know, just understanding how to, how to open ArcGIS, how to add those layers or create them using Arc Catalog. And these are all things that can be taught to literally anyone. Now for tribes, it, it starts to change the concept of how we deploy GIS realistically at, at the tools and the resources. Um, there's a, a number of tools and resources available to tribes that may or may not be available to other entities. I, I'm sure and confident that there's, there's resources available to cities and counties as well. Um, but we're going to focus in on specifically the resources available to tribes. Some of the resources available to Indian Country are really quite advantageous. So the first thing for tribes that are, as tribes we're able to take advantage of, is the fact that the GIS software that we're going to be using for our applications is actually available to us via a program through the Bureau of Indian Affairs. So via the Bureau of Indian Affairs we can actually go through their website, we can take a look at what resources that they have available and one of the notions that they actually have available is their geospatial program. And under the geospatial program within BIA Tribes are actually eligible to receive software through the BIA at no cost. Now that's not to say that the software isn't being donated. The software is actually being paid for by the Bureau of Indian Affairs because many years ago the BIA saw the effectiveness of GIS and understood that the capabilities of GIS was benefiting both the tribes and the federal government in understanding where tribes are located and what the resources are that tribes either need or are deploying. So it, it made a lot of sense both on the tribal side to look at this as well as the federal government side. So when tribes are needing to get started, one of their first stepping points or first stops along the way is to get the necessary software on their computers. They're able to do this through the Bureau of Indian Affairs Office of Trust Services. Through the Office of Trust Services, the tribes can request the necessary software um, and, and begin the process of getting that, that component along with some basic training. Um, the Office of Trust Services also provides online courses as well as in-person training. So that gives the tribe the basic tools that they need in order to be able to, to get started with the concept. Now the next phase of things is once the tribes have that initial concept started, Many times the next question is, especially if it's a new person, perhaps working for the tribe or just getting started with GIS, is, you know, how are other tribes using GIS? How are they applying it and how are they making a difference with these tools? And a number of years ago, that, that was a concept and an issue that was kind of 
permeating through Indian country was this idea of where do I get started and there was a need for that that kind of understanding so out of that need of understanding of how other tribes are using the tools and and how we can learn from one another you know with the 570 plus federally recognized tribes out there most tribes are willing to assist or are willing to explain to others how they're using the tools and the technology but we needed a sounding board and and from that need was the initial concept that developed the National Tribal Geographic Information Support Center, otherwise known as Tribal GIS. So if we actually take a moment and go out and look at the Tribal GIS organization site, we'll be able to see a number of resources that are available to tribes. And we, we kind of work this in, in tandem. So the starting point is you, you go through BIA, you get your necessary software, and then you can always contact the Tribal GIS organization. The membership of the organization is anyone that works for a federally recognized tribe or is a tribal member. Um, to date, we have a little over 300 members representing about 180 tribes throughout the United States. So we have a large majority of the tribes utilizing GIS um, actively participating in things. So for those who are just coming on board, one of the things that we, we do is, is try to um, share that information. What are those starting points? You know, those things that we identified in that, that very beginning conversation of what is your objectives and what are your goals? Has this already been done by a tribe? And if it has, let's not reinvent the wheel. We're going to connect you up. We're going to work with you and, and show you what has worked for other tribal communities in order to carry that message forward. There's no cost for the tribes to utilize or be a member of tribal GIS, the same as there's no cost for them to receive the software from the BIA. So this makes a, a very large advantage to tribal communities that are still in that process of, of learning and starting the use of GIS to get their foot in the door and really get things up and running. Now once we've established the, the basics of, of how they're using GIS, there's a number of other programs and things that we are doing to perpetuate GIS in Indian Country. We have programs such as the program at Southwest Indian Polytech where we're able to get tribal members um, a certificate or an associate's degree in geospatial technologies. Um, by partnering and working with the California Indian Museum, we're working with youth in Northern California to educate them on the basis of GIS with the idea that this next generation of these, these kids or these college students, they're the ones that's going to carry this tool forward and really take us to that next level. Again, it, it kind of starts with the beginning. The, the idea of geospatial thinking within Indian country goes back thousands of years, but the future of where we're going to take it actually goes to the youth that we're working with today, the college students, and the folks that are going to carry it forward in the next generations. Mm -hmm.